We've got the Mac Pro in the studio. Right away, I'll say this is a review unit. I don't get to keep this, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with it. I wanna see what can this allow me to do, having such an incredible expensive machine that I couldn't do previously with something like a MacBook Pro that I currently use. Obviously, these, that doesn't need to be compared. These two machines are not similar at all, but I'm right on the edge of that kind of creator that could almost justify this. And we've also got the Apple Pro Display XDR. This might even be further out of my range, but I wanna know like what kind of content could I create or how could I do it faster or better or what opportunities would this incredible, beautiful machine open up for me? And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. They can improve your creative game for a lot less than a Mac Pro. More about them later. Let's take a look at this computer for studio portrait photography. Jason has come to the other side of the camera now, he's gonna get his portrait taken. And we have flipped the XDR monitor into portrait mode, which is incredibly easy. I actually did it with one hand. I know other monitors can do this. It's just built in and very simple to do. And the OS automatically rotates. I appreciate that. But what can this computer actually do for photographers? The one that we have, I think is actually over spec It's 16 cores. It's got tons of RAM, things that are actually a bit harder to tap into with photography but there are some distinct advantages of having a machine like this in your studio. First of all, your clients are gonna love you, but it's so much more than that. It's all the reasons that we've been wanting Apple to build a tower for a long time. It's gonna be super expandable, so I feel like even if you build a base model, you can keep adding hard drives over time, you can add more RAM later. I would love to be shooting with this on a regular basis. I think Jason would too. You may have heard this thing can hold up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM, which sounded like a typo, but apparently it's not. In this machine, I have 192 gigabytes, which is way more than I've had in any other computer. I'm just gonna run as many things as I can and see how it reacts, see if it ever slows down, see if I can hear the fans. I've got a lot of stuff running here. Uh, capture one, let's start by processing out a bunch of 16-bit TIFFs. Yeah, I'll just do another set of them. And just to take a quick glance here, you can see that all of our CPUs are being used up. Right now, the memory usage is 43 gigabytes. And in Photoshop, this is a 100 megapixel photo. Um, so I'm gonna do, let's duplicate the layer for one thing. Add a few adjustment layers. And while that's going on, let's also start in export. So we'll redo that um, render out of Resolve. And uh, how about just start playback in Final Cut? Does that keep playing as I move around? It does. Now if I just take a glance, we still got all our core spiking, which is exactly what I wanna see. And now I'm using just over 50 gigs of RAM. That's not, that's not enough. How do, I, how do I do more? I'm trying to open all of these 44 photos in Lightroom and I feel Lightroom, oh, I feel Lightroom starting to lock up. So I definitely notice Lightroom is the first thing to start slowing down. Even when I'm not running other apps, actually, it is just not optimized to take advantage of more than about six cores, it seems like. So a lot of this machine seems to be wasted. If you're a photographer using Lightroom, I'm, I'm sorry, but this won't make the improvements you're looking for. I am optimistic about Capture One though. It should take better advantage of the machine. Okay, I'm just gonna open all of these photos in Photoshop. So there's 44 of them. This has to cause problems. But my memory usage still isn't going up. All the cores are full. It actually says Lightroom's not responding at the moment. And I forgot I left DaVinci rendering this 4K RAW file. So that's happening at the same time. Playback stopped in uh, Final Cut, so let's keep that playing. I mean, Capture, I might as well just process these out again. Will that help? And now I'm at 62 gigs of RAM. I'm not even a third of the way there. Photoshop is still opening files. <laughs> And I realize some of these are processor or GPU intensive tasks. They're not all leaning on RAM at all. But still, how do I use this RAM? I, I have no idea. So now we've got about 50 something photos open in Photoshop, all 16 bit TIFFs. And everything else is still running. Now we're at 70 gigs. I think the truth is there are very few photographers out there that can really tap into the potential of what this can do maxed out. It just goes way beyond. Like the, the ultimate power in here is really for either 3D or video, which we still haven't been able to max that out either. But even if you're shooting on a Hasselblad or a phase one, you've got hundred megapixels plus, it seems to handle it 
perfectly. Getting a new computer is fun, but since you can't do that every day, let's do the next best thing and play with the configurator. Here's a computer that I build for a photographer with needs like ours in our studio, which you're still budget conscious, but you do have high demands, a lot of data, big files. I make a little bump in the processors to 12 cores, and this is mostly future proofing. I'm not sure everybody needs it. I'd get 96 gigabytes of memory just because I know that's the most I'll really ever be needing. And I'd stick to the base GPU because you can update this later. All the upgrades are very expensive. So more or less, this is a place to save some money. And speaking of saving money, this is where I'd get a one terabyte system drive. Obviously, I'm going to need more storage, but I would be buying third party stuff for that. Same might go for RAM. You could probably go with the minimum amount of RAM and add your own. I know there's a lot of good deals out there. But looking at what you get here, you're still well under $10,000 US and you have a lot of room for upgrades in the future you could really grow into this machine and it could last you a long time. One thing this would be able to change for me is the ability to play back multicam 4K high quality ProRes files. It's gonna smash through this because it should be able to handle 8K, but so right now I have five files. They're all 4K ProRes 4444, which is as many fours you can get. It's as big as you can get, as high quality as you can get. And not surprisingly, there is absolutely no stutter. There is no problems. It can, it can just fly through this stuff. Now let's build a computer for the independent video creator. Again, this is based on my needs. I would do that same processor bump up to 12 cores. I would love to go further, but the price adds up pretty quickly there. Again, 96 gigs of RAM. Maybe I'd be buying that third party, but since we're on the Apple website, I would definitely want to start upgrading the GPU here. Yeah, down the road, I might get something better, but I couldn't operate with just the minimum eight gigabyte version out of the gate. It wouldn't be enough for 4K. Internal storage would be one terabyte. Of course, we're going to be saving all of our projects onto bigger third-party drives. And then an afterburner card, this is really optional. Depends on your needs. I don't have a primarily ProRes workflow, so I couldn't really benefit from it that much. But hey, if I ever get an Alexa. I know this thing looks good in photos, but now that I've spent some time with it in person, it's easily the most beautiful, well-designed computer I've ever interacted with at all. I had the previous cheese grater, the, the old school one that this design is based off of, and it lasted me a long time. I upgraded it a lot. It did very well for me. This is way nicer. Uh, I mean, I can see why it is so much more expensive and it may be frustrating because that extra price may mean you're not gonna buy it. Probably means that I'm not gonna be buying it but I can see where the money went because this design is incredible. Let's not just gush over how beautiful it is. What can this do for us? Obviously, it is incredibly expandable. So for one thing, you could fill it with hard drives. That is something I would do. Right now, we have two of the MPX modules taken up by video cards. That's great. It's incredibly powerful. But I would love to use the Promise option that allows you to fill this with a bunch of fast SSDs into a RAID. But my favorite feature is the Afterburner card right here. Currently, this has relatively limited use. Not everybody needs one of these because all it does, one single task, is accelerates ProRes workflow. So if you're editing ProRes videos, it's gonna go a lot faster, basically handles all of it by itself. If you're not shooting ProRes, like let's say you're using a RED camera, this doesn't actually have any impact at all. It doesn't even touch your files, but what the card actually is, is a field programmable gate array. And I am not technical enough to really understand the details of it, but I do know that it means that this card can be fully reprogrammed to accelerate other types of software. So I don't know the details about who has planned what, but it does mean that in theory, Red or Octane or many other software platforms could take this exact same card and reprogram it to just accelerate whatever it is they need to do. I don't know what possibilities that will open up in the future, but it's incredibly exciting and I cannot wait to see how that goes. It means that all of the power does not need to be going through your CPU or GPU. It can be redirected through that afterburner. A tiny detail that I love is that if you happen to be running professional software like Avid or Pro Tools that requires a USB-C key to unlock the software, Apple has added a USB-C A port inside of the machine. So the little dongle doesn't have to hang off the back. It's buried inside where it should be who thinks of this? I love it. Whether or not you're the kind of creator that needs a Mac Pro, you definitely need a great website. And of course, I'm talking about this video sponsor, Squarespace. There's no better tool for presenting your photography or your video or audio work to the world than Squarespace. I've been using them for over a decade now because they just get everything done 
easily, simply, and beautifully. Their designers have already done the hard work of creating websites that are responsive, whether you're looking at them on a phone, tablet, or computer. They have great SEO, so everybody's gonna find your content. And of course, the analytics that you'd expect to know what's performing. Anytime you have a little idea for a project, you can just get started on it. And within an hour or two, you've put together a real website that other people could instantly use, and all you gotta do is hit publish. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial now. And once you feel like you have something ready, and you want to launch it to the world, go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman and use offer code Tyler Stallman where you'll get 10% off your first website or domain. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, but also just for making a great product. I know it's silly to get excited about old school USB ports, but I am very happy to see these back here. I kind of forgot they were on this machine and then I brought my old hard drives and popped them right in, no adapters. I really do appreciate that. But a big complaint in the back here we have the headphone jack at the very back of the computer. That's not very easy to get to. I don't know why it's not on top. That would make more sense to me. I realize a lot of professionals would be going through some kind of audio interface, but not everybody is. So I don't know. Weird place for audio. There's a ton of reasons that I need to record audio near a computer. So right now I've set up the Deity S Mic 2 right beside the Mac Pro, and I'm gonna do some screen recording. So Typically, this would be for something like a YouTube tutorial. So I'm gonna just use QuickTime for this. And with something, especially like a screen recorder, the more that's going on, like I'm running Final Cut right now, I'm running Capture One, they will start making the fans kick in like crazy and you will get a very audible, loud fan noise. This is especially annoying on my podcast because if the fans are spinning, it means I need to do noise reduction across the whole thing. Let's put this to a pretty serious test. I'm gonna render out raw 4K video into ProRes files in Resolve while I record the screen recording. And let's hear how quiet these fans are. And I don't know about you, but right now from here, the fans of the lights in the room are actually louder. That's the loudest thing I can hear in the room. And keep in mind, we're doing a lot of things here. This is playing 4K video, it's rendering 4K raw video, and we can be editing <laughs> 30 megapixel photos all at the same time. I know there was a bunch of engineering that went into this. It's not an accident that it's so quiet. All of the holes in the front of it help, but also the way that each fan was engineered, they spin at slightly different frequencies so that it distributes a broader spectrum of noise. So it's not one piercing hum that cuts through, like just a very soft ambience, but it doesn't sound like fan noise, which is exceptional and I appreciate it. But also, I don't know how to make the fans turn on all the way. I've watched a few other people's videos and if you go into the terminal or whatever, you can force them to, but in normal operation, they just never seem to really work very hard. All right, now let's try the same thing with my MacBook. If you haven't noticed it in previous videos, it's because I put music over top of the sound of the computer noise. So I hope it never bothered you before, but I do love it about the Mac Pro. I think that Apple's delivered in all the ways that we asked them to with this new Mac Pro. It's got the expansion we want, the cooling, the size. I mean, I can just fill it with hard drives and graphics cards and keep it moving forward. I have a feeling this is gonna be the Pro solution for the next 10 years. And I'm even optimistic the price will come down someday. I guess don't quote me on it in case it doesn't, but I think it will, I think it makes sense. I don't think uh, Apple did this for the short-term plan. This is the plan for the future. So thank you, Apple, for building this machine. Um, not ordering one today, but I think if you were to invest in it now, you'll probably still be using it for years to come. If you wanna know more about what I think, I've already had a bunch of fantastic guests on the podcast that know how to put these things to use. Video editors and photographers that can really push this to the limit. So go to stallmanpodcast.com to hear a whole lot more about it.